Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com How to make a Viking battle axe out of an old rusty axe head. Now this particular Viking uh, styled axe was carved or cut out of an old axe head and then we added some metal etching uh, to give it a little additional flair. We added a dragon, some uh, Celtic designs, uh, also carved some Celtic designs into the wood handle. Very easy do-it-yourself project. The main tool for this job is an angle grinder. So anyway, this is the axe head. I actually found it in my son's garden when we were cleaning up his uh, his new backyard and decided to make something a little bit more uh, creative out of it. So I, I basically just drew out uh, the design that I wanted just with a marker um, and then we got to work. Uh, also, if you look at the back of it, I wanted to remove some of that additional weight from the back and narrow out the blade a little bit. So basically went to work uh, with an angle grinder or a disc grinder. I think I went through uh, two or three cutting wheels on this job. You know, unlike, you know, most times I'm working on a, on a knife project, uh, knives are much thinner than this is. Um, you know, most of my knives are 3 16 uh, thick. Uh, th this, you've got some heavy duty steel. So it did go through a couple of cutting blades, uh, but it wasn't difficult. Um, it actually cuts pretty quickly. I didn't even bother to uh, heat this blade up and anneal it or soften it. Um, I just, just basically made my cuts, um, quenched it occasion occasionally to keep it cool so it didn't overheat. Now what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm making plunge cuts straight in um, and then I'm, I'm cutting away each little piece uh, that I can. Uh, it's not a perfect cut. It's going to end up with a very ragged edge. Um, but at this point, I'm just removing uh, the unwanted material. And you can see I'm slowly starting to, uh, to work my way up the blade. These little angle grinders, a four and a half inch angle grinder, just is a great tool. So plunge in, and then from an angle, uh, I'm going to make another plunge in order to remove that uh, that segment of steel. Now basically because I can't make that curved cut with this angle grinder. So I'm going to cut it all away and then I'm going to use a uh, flap sanding wheel on the same grinder in order to uh, smooth out all of the rough edges. one more you know, quarter inch of material or so that's holding this piece on. And this is this is the thickness. I mean this is what's different about it than than my standard knife making. So anyway, after a little while, and it you know, probably took me an hour uh, to cut out uh, the basic shape of this Viking battle axe, I then 
change the wheel on the angle grinder to a flap sanding wheel. Um, I'm using a very coarse grid. I think this is a 36. And I'm just going to use this to rough out uh, all of those jagged edges uh, from the cutting wheels and bring this uh, blade into the desired shape. So I can do all, basically all of my shaping now uh, with the angle grinder and the flap sanding wheel. I'm also going to use that flap sanding wheel uh, in order to uh, clean up uh, the blade or the surface of the blade. Get rid of any of the rust, get rid of the majority of the divots and, and um, scratches and damage from years of use. Now my goal on this knife is not to bring it to a mirror polish um, like it was brand new. Um, I would have to just grind away too much material. Uh, what I wanted to do was just polish it enough so that I could accurately, you know, adhere the vinyl adhesives in order to do the metal etching. Uh, so after I'm finished with the angle grinder, I am going to use an oscillating sander. I sanded it with a number 80 uh, paper, and then I sanded it with a 220, uh, very, very roughly with a 220. Um, if you, if you look real close, I did leave a lot of those little dings and, and divots um, and deep scratches. Um, that's going to all add to the patina of the finished product. I, like I said, I don't want this, this thing to look like it's brand new. I want it to look like it's aged. Now, I cut out uh, templates on uh, self-adhesive vinyl on my uh, Silhouette Cameo vinyl cutting machine, and I adhered those to the blade. Um, I'm using a car battery charger, 12 volt charger, salt water, and basically uh, it's a 12 volt, 2 amps. I wind up a wad of um, gauze onto the negative uh, end of the charger. The positive end gets attached to the piece. I moisten it in the salt water, and then I apply it with pressure about 10 seconds um, at a time, and then I move it. And until I cover the entire area. And basically everything that's not covered with vinyl will get etched. I, go, I went back and forth over the entire piece so that every single area uh, was etched for at least 60 to 70 seconds. I wanted a, a, a deep etch on this piece. And you can see that the, uh, the gauze that's um, clamped into the negative uh, clamp on this charger really gets gets black and dirty and if you look real close you can see steam and smoke coming up uh, as it as it goes through its etching process. You don't want to hold it in one position for much more you know than 10 or 15 seconds because you really don't want to damage the vinyl uh, or melt the vinyl. Um, you want that vinyl to be as intact as possible so that the finished product is as, has crisp clean etching lines. Anyway, once the etching's all done, uh, then you can just remove the vinyl. And you have to just clean it up a little bit. You know, there, are, there are many other ways of metal etching. Um, you know, people use acid. Uh, people dunk the entire item. Uh, into a vat of salt water and use this electro etching. Uh, this is just my preferred method. Everybody is comfortable with they, what they know or what they use. It gives me a little bit more control. Um, I can control exactly how deep I want the etching to be, um, and I can make sure that I don't, you know, get any of the water onto any of the clean surfaces surrounding the vinyl. Because I don't want to etch any of those. So I just use a uh, a tweezer. I remove all of the vinyl. I cleaned it up a little bit with the salt water. I will eventually wipe this down um, with alcohol. And I will give it a very, very light sanding uh, with about a 500 grit uh, emery paper. And that just polishes up um, everything that was not etched. And here's the emery paper. Now this will rust, um, especially since we've been etching it in salt water. Um, so you really have to oil this down to prevent it from rusting.
what I did was I used that to my advantage. I let it rust for a day before I cleaned it up again, and it adds, added some additional patina. Um, I did put another vinyl sticker, also cut with the uh, Silhouette Cameo, right onto the wood handle, and then I used a um, Dremel grinder, a uh, little drum sanding wheel and a couple of little bits uh, to carve out the wood surrounding that deca decal, and then I removed the decal, and we just added a... Uh, you know, a little Celtic design onto the handle. Um, and then, uh, because I wanted to age the handle, I used a little torch just to make those carvings stand out and to uh, add some age to the, to the entire handle and just darken certain areas. And, and that's basically it. Uh, a very simple, easy to do, upcycled axe handle uh, that was crafted into a Viking battle axe style axe. Of course, you could do this metal etching with any designs you want. Um, you can look up designs on the web and download them. You can create your own, etc. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, please check us out on the web at DIYEasyCrafts.com. Be sure to check out our other how-to videos. Thank you very much.